Thank you, Jesus. What a day to spend with you, Father. I thank you for this awesome people in here today, Father, that you've drawn into your kingdom, Lord. And as we worship you in this place, as the word goes forth, Father, Lord, just speak to our hearts. Change us. Transform us, Lord. We open ourselves up to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Father, where we fail you, Lord, correct us, discipline us, Father. Lord, that it would bring us into the righteousness, Father, for we know, Lord, that righteousness, holiness is in heaven. It's only found through the blood of Jesus today. Forgive us for we fall short. Open us up to receive today and we give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Welcome to the Hill Eldo this morning. It is good to see everyone here this morning. Worship team, awesome job. Give them a hand. I tell you what, man, the Lord just uses them and... They're willing vessels, man. It's awesome. If you are interested in uh, joining the worship team, playing an instrument or something, just talk with Pastor Faith, and uh, she will hook you up. It is a good day to be in the Lord today. Is everybody done shooting fireworks? Oh, okay, Kelly. <laughs> we are done seeing fireworks. Unless it's the firework of the Holy Ghost. No, man, it's good to see everybody. Today, I do do want to talk about freedom. We're starting our sweet summer series. We do every July, every year. And right as you go out today, we got some bomb pops for you. So take one home with you. I would eat it probably before you get home or it'll just be lemonade or something. So, But we got it for you right after service. Be sure to grab one. I want to talk about freedom today. If you want to go, our main text is going to be Malachi chapter 3, 13 through 18. It's Malachi chapter 3, verses 13. 13 through 18. And really today what I'm going to uh, speak to you, this is about as political as I get, okay? So just uh, notice that I, I don't uh, feel we need to promote anything other than God from the stage, but nonetheless, uh, we got to talk about America a little bit. And to me, man, I believe that there's hope. I believe that uh, God's still God on the throne. I believe God's still working. God's still blessing. God's still favoring us for a moment. And I believe it within my heart that God can transform people. And really what I want to talk about is how we obtain this freedom. Because we obviously see over time and over years the, cons the constraint of these judicial freedoms in America is really getting tight and tighter every day. Praise the Lord that we can come in here together and read the Bible and we can worship God. Praise the Lord that they're still giving tests in school so there's still kids praying every day in school. <laughs> Praise God that we have these freedoms in our life and we all understand that freedoms come at a cost oftentimes. But even as legislation continues to pass through our Congress, many feel that Christian freedom here in America America is becoming opposed by outside influences. And obviously we see many facets of that throughout the world. And we can even begin to see, and the Lord showed me many, many years ago, that I believe there's going to be a great deception that comes in that kind of appears like the light, but it's really the devil. That kind of appears like the word, but ain't the word of God. That's why I'm always preaching, you got to get in the word and know the great shepherd's voice. This will speak to you. It will guide you. It will direct you. But even though all these things are being misconstrued, I really believe that we have an opportunity, especially as a kingdom planted church, as a kingdom church, to change this entire nation, to change the world through small town America, through revivals that's happening in and through people like you and me. You heard me preaching not too long ago, but I believe God's in the valley. He's on the mountain. God God's with the poor and the lowly. He's with the rich and the famous. God is still God. And God still moves in and through us. And we as a church, especially a church in America, has to make a stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to me, we got to bind together with Jesus Christ and Christ crucified. You know, when Paul was talking about the conflicts among the churches, he constantly tried to bring them back. Listen, this is about Jesus Christ, Christ crucified. This this is about the gospel, and that's what binds us together. And I believe that we were built as a nation, as one nation, under the God that we serve today. 
And I believe we can stay that way if we want. <laughs> I do think it's time to make a rise. But here's what I want you to catch out of everything today. No one and no thing can take away true Christian freedom or God's freedom. You can pass laws, you can do what you want, but still as a believer in Jesus Christ, you got to recognize that you have freedom in Jesus Christ. And no one's going to remove God off his throne. His way and his will will be done, has been done, and will continue to be done. Nothing can remove the freedom from God moving in our lives. Nothing can can remove your freedom that you have in Jesus Christ. He says you've been set free and free indeed, and you're free no matter what part of the planet you're on today. In Christ Jesus. If you would stand with me in the reading of God's Word this morning, we like to stand just to honor the reading. If you're unable to stand, we completely understand this morning. Here's what it says. Malachi chapter 3, 13 through 18. Your words have been arrogant against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his charge and that we have walked in mourning before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the arrogant blessed. Not only are the doers of wickedness built up, but they also test God and escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it. The Lord gave attention and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. They will be mine. Thank you, Lord. Says the Lord of hosts. On that day that I prepare my own possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to speak your word today. And Father, as usual, I pray as a bond servant of Jesus Christ, you wouldn't give me, you would give me words to speak from your throne room, Father and it would flow through this vessel. Strengthen this vessel today, Lord, that it would give you glory and honor. And I praise you in all things, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat if you'd like. Christian freedom. Here's what I want to talk about. Two things today. One is Christian freedom in America, and one is God's freedom in America. And here's what I want to say a few things about Christian freedom. As I already told you, I believe that Christian freedom is not determined by governmental laws. Christian freedom is not determined by governmental laws. Christian freedom is determined by one law, and that's the Word of God. That's where Christian freedom comes from. Christian freedom is determined by fleeing from evil and being holy. Just as he said, once again, I will set you apart and you can distinguish between those who are righteous and holy and those who are wicked. There's a distinction between us as believers in Jesus Christ and those who are not. And the distinction comes from the word of God and from Jesus Christ and Christ crucified. The distinction comes from that we have been washed clean and been given freedom through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I believe that our country's forefathers desired the law of this land to be based upon God's word. But here's how I usually say it, and I know some people don't like it, and that's okay. Morality cannot be legislated. Morality cannot be legislated. Morality comes from what God tells us to do and not to do. Morality comes from his holiness and his righteousness. And morality comes from a heart that's pure and holy and seeking after God. We're free to live however we want to live. There's no doubt about that. In fact, even sinners and saints, we are free to live how we want to live. So the question then becomes, are we pleasing to God on how we live? Because you can live however you want to live, but is it pleasing unto the Father? We're free to be whoever we want to be. In fact, you can change who you want to be today if you want to change. But our identity is found in Jesus Christ. 
And the question then becomes, what does God want us to be? Who has God created us to be? You see, our freedom comes from the cleansing power of the spirit of a living God. It's cleansed from unrighteousness. It's cleansed from sin. It's cleansed from our self-righteousness and our selfish ambitions. Our freedom comes from the deutimous power of the Holy Spirit. Deutimous simply means dynamite. It's an explosive power. And there's power in the Holy Spirit. And to walk and, and to operate in freedom freedom in America, we do it by the direction and the power and the guidance of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then we walk in freedom no matter what is coming against us, no matter who says what, no matter who does what against us, we are still free because of Jesus Christ. The law of the Spirit versus the law of the letter. Let me tell you, people can never fulfill the law of the letter, and I don't care if it's the law of Moses or the law of the Lamb. You cannot fulfill the morality and legislation even without the deutimous power of the Holy Spirit, without Jesus Christ in your life. Because most of us just want to kill somebody. <laughs> but Jesus says to love them. But Jesus says to care for his creation. And the only way to do it is through the Word of God. It's through the word that's hidden in your heart. It's through the freedom in Jesus Christ. Galatians 5.18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. You see, we can live as free moral people despite the laws created by our government because God provides wisdom and truth in our hearts to fulfill the law. It's who we are as believers in Jesus Christ. If the word of God is not living in us, then it will never live out of us. So how are we to be moral and upright and righteous and holy without the word in us that is living out of us that is loving other people? It's freedom in Jesus Christ. You see, I don't believe that Christian freedoms are determined by governmental entities. Christian freedom is determined by the Word of God, by Jesus Christ. Presidents, House of Representatives, Senators, right? Speaker of the House, Governors, Mayors, City Councils, let me just tell you, they are not the Almighty God. He is still on the throne today. He still reigns supreme today. God is on the throne, and the Bible says the earth is nothing but his footstool, and heaven is his throne room. Nothing has removed the freedom of God or the freedom of believers unless we give that freedom away. There is only one individual that truly gave freedom, real freedom, that truly gave freedom and also defined the cost of that freedom, Jesus Christ. And there's only one entity that I see that even demonstrates it, and that's our military that would lay down their life for their brothers and sisters that they could have freedom. That's an example of who Jesus is. Jude 1 4 says this some godless people have sneaked in among you and are saying, God treats us much better than we deserve, and so it is all right to be immoral. They even deny that we must obey Jesus Christ as our only Master and Lord. But long ago, the scriptures warned that these godless people were doomed. If we're looking to anyone other than Christ for our freedom, then we're putting too much trust and faith in the wrong thing. It's that simple. Christ holds the ability to forgive or not to forgive. No one else does. He holds the ability to go to whether we go to heaven or whether we go to hell. He's the righteous judge. He's the one that we answer to. Christ holds the right to govern and rule. He holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. All authority has been given unto him. So that's who we should look towards for our freedom in our life. Yeah. 
No one or no thing can take away the freedom that Christ gives to an individual. As believers, we're allowing, I think, some governmental laws and entities to shut us up because we're fearing what will happen if we speak out and we stand upon the truth of God's Word. Well, let me tell you, you may die. You may be spit at. You may be mocked. You may be ridiculed. It may not be easy at times. But I'm telling you, it's heaven or hell. I'm telling you, if you want real freedom, you've got to find it in Jesus Christ. It's the only way. If you really want to be set free, it's only through Jesus Christ. And you see, I don't think our Christian freedom is determined by governmental documents. There's only one document, as I already told you, that determines our freedom. The Word of God. The Bible. You see, government documents, they can be eradicated, right? They can be destroyed. They can be rewritten. You can do all kinds of fancy things in government law. And you can change it, and you can make it this way, and man-made. And it's really most oftentimes opinionated and manufactured. But as believers in Jesus Christ, really, this is my declaration of independence right here. Right? This is what tells me I'm free. This is what shows me I'm free. This is the Word of God. God that's hidden in our hearts. 2 Corinthians 7 1 says this, therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You see, the promises of God is really our true freedom from oppression and even opposition. The promises of God are the true freedom to succeed and prosper. It's the promises of God that moves us into our future when we couple it, as I mentioned before, with faith and hope. It changes our future forever. So to the church, I think we have an opportunity. And really, I think it's time such as this to uphold the laws of this land through holy living, through Jesus Christ who has, who has set us free. And really, I think it's time to create some governmental entities that are an example of who Jesus Christ is, just like our military. Right? It's time to stand upon God's word and, and begin to govern a nation through the word of of God. And as believers, we're free no matter what. Christian freedom. And as I mentioned to you, the second thing, God's freedom is never removed. God's freedom is also, and you may not like this, and I get that, that's fine, throw things after me after. There's bomb pops, they're soft. God's freedom isn't determined by we the people. God's freedom isn't determined by we the people. God's freedom is determined by God. And too many make God to be whatever they want to be, whoever they want him to be at that moment in time when they need him. I need finances. So, God, today, would you just be the provider? God, I need to help with this today. Can you just do this for me? God, you know what? I don't really like that part of the Word of God, so we, let's just change that up a little bit so it meets my lifestyle. Essentially, what they begin to create is a false idol that they worship, only thinking that they serve the one true God. That's the deception of the enemy. That we begin to worship a God that isn't really the one true God. Eventually, it all falls apart. And Psalms 100 verse 3 says this, Know that the Lord himself is God. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. You see, we don't get to say, God do this or God do that. God can't be put in a box and taken out whenever we want. We cannot be placing God on the shelf for a while that looks real nice as it collects dust up there. Right? We can't fit God into a size that really meets our perspective of our issues and our circumstances and our situations. One song stanza says this, when did I forget that you have always been the king of the world? When did I forget that you've always been king of the world? 
God is who God is, and we the people cannot change him. He is who he is. That's why we the people have to be under God. That's why we the people must serve the God in heaven. If we want to know who God is, then we got to begin to spend some time with him, learn from him, hear from him, talk to him. God will be known and the truth will be revealed and the light will overcome the darkness. There will eventually be the moment in time when God returns for his people and we all go home. But right now... We look towards him. See, God's freedom isn't determined by we the nation. It's determined by God. And God has the freedom to call a nation his chosen people if God chooses to call them his chosen people. The question then becomes, do we choose him when he chooses us? Deuteronomy 14, 2 says this, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for his own possession out of all the people who are on the face of the earth. Let me tell you, we're not a blessed nation just because we say we're one nation under God. That's not what brings blessings upon our life. As a nation, we indeed obviously play a vital role of whether God chooses us, if we will choose him. But more importantly, if we choose him, then we must choose his way and his will in our own personal lives. If you choose him, that's why I always say at the end of the service, when we do the altar call, will you accept him as your Savior and Lord? Will you do his way and his will? As he gets you out of hell. <laughs> Our concern, I love this statement. Abe Lincoln says this, Sir, my concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side, for God is always right. That's good. My concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side, for God is always right. Our concern should not be, how do we get God on our side? Our concern should be, how do I get on God's side? How can I couple the, the, this, this nation with God's side? How can I couple my family with God's side? How can I live my life that, uh, that doesn't oppose God's side, but I'm on God's side? Even as a nation in America, God God chose us, showed mercy upon us, called us out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Yet will we as aliens and strangers continue to abstain from fleshly lust with wages war against the soul? See, God has the freedom to accept or reject. He has the freedom to bless or curse. He has the freedom to protect or destroy. So the ultimate question becomes in our life, are we pleasing to God? Do we really have freedom in Him? Worship team, would you guys mind coming up? See, a lot of this comes from really humility, humbling ourselves before God. And really, Christian freedom comes from our ability or our desire or our willingness to stand upon the truth of God's Word and to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, maybe in your homes, <laughs> you've removed God a little bit. Chaos is ensuing. Maybe in your own life today, you're like, you know what? I haven't been very pleasing to the Heavenly Father. I haven't been following Him like I should be. Maybe you're in here today and you never asked Jesus in your heart. You've gone so far away, you don't know whether you're saved or not. But today you're like, man, I want to know that I'm a child of God. I want freedom in Him. You know, I, I've never talked to an addict or someone away from God that at some point didn't be like, man, I just feel like I'm in chains. <laughs> I feel like I can't get up. 
I feel like I can't move. I feel like I can't do the right thing. I can't walk in the right direction. I feel this. and It's because you're trying to find freedom in something else that you can never find freedom in. It's a temporary, momentarily moment of pleasure sometimes. And then you're right back in the hell you were before. Listen, if you need to get some things right with the Lord today, we're going to have people up here praying here in just a moment. But we're just going to spend some time in worship, two or three songs here this morning. And maybe you just want to get alone and pray somewhere across this place. You're welcome to do that. But we'll have some folks up here to pray for you. Also, right back in the back at the double doors is a communion table. Someone will be back there ready to serve you communion if you'd like. You can take your family back there, yourself, and just partake of communion. Up here today is also the offering buckets. If you want to give, you're welcome to do that today as well. But listen, you need salvation today. Come and talk to one of us up here. Man, we just want to lead you to the Lord. You need prayer for something else. Come on up here and we'll just pray over you. Let's just spend some time in worship. Focus on him. See what God wants to do among us and in us and through us today. Tell you what, let's stand together. These altars are open for you.